Okay, so this video started off as an attempt to produce a vlog showing everything that goes into traveling to photograph a match in the EFL here in England. However, this game and also the next one I tried it at had a few little complications thrown up, which basically meant I could not complete the recording, but I did have quite a bit of footage left around. So instead, this video is going to kind of be an introduction to shooting professional football here in England. So let's try that again. Okay, let's start with it. every photographer's favourite subject, and that is their gear. I shot this match like I have shot every other match this season, with two main bodies and a mixture of three lenses. So the Canon 1D Mark IV with the Canon 70-200 uh, lens on, that is what I use as one setup, and then the Canon 80D, which is a crop sensor, that carries my 400mm 2.8 lens. If you're new to sports photography and you think... Uh, well, that list is quite intimidating. Basically, I started off a uh, good four, five, well, five, six years ago, just with the 1D Mark IV and the 200, 70 to 200mm lens, both of which were purchased used. I also carry with me the Canon 70 to 40mm f4 lens. This is for kind of general view, wide angle shots in and outside of the stadium before the game. In an ideal scenario, and every photographer is in the same position, I'd love to have another decent camera body to have that wide angle on um, and that's for things like goal celebrations when, when players run up to you or if you get maybe a nice wide shot of a free kick or a corner or something like that but um, it's not feasible to change lenses and bodies really as these things happen in the game and so I generally have the wide angle just for stuff before the game maybe during warm-up and then that goes back in the bag uh, probably 99% of the time after that. Next thing I just wanted to touch on was the journey and arrival at the stadium you're shooting at. Now, I remember uh, probably the first year I was doing photography uh, within the EFL. I read an interview with, I think it was a photographer from Getty, and they said they arrive at the stadium probably about four hours before a game. Now, they were shooting in the Premier League, but even still, I thought that's quite a long way out from kickoff. Actually, once you kind of start to shoot more frequently especially when you go into grounds where you're perhaps not so familiar with or there's a bit of a journey involved as well try not to leave yourself rushed don't work out that you know a stadium's an hour away or an hour and a half away and so maybe leave two hours before kickoff because you've still got half an hour spare you'll probably get away with it but there'll be several times in the season where you just won't and you're going to add a whole deal of stress uh, to your journey and to your day it's just not a good place to start try and aim to get there i i, I now try and aim for away games uh, so to games where i'm traveling quite a distance to get there at least an hour and a half before kickoff if you can the bonus of doing that as well if you maybe get there say an hour and three quarters before kickoff quite uh, commonly teams will arrive or, or certainly the way teams will arrive on a team coach if it's a three o'clock kickoff on a saturday expect them to get there at about half one so you can get those early shots and if you're shooting for an agency or maybe for a club who are trying to tell a story or, or sell photos into live blogs or, or put things out on social media getting things like the players arriving and getting off a coach while it seems trivial and won't be worth much at 5 p.m when people are scraping around for content at half one in the afternoon you'd be amazed just how far they can occasionally go so definitely worth getting there leave yourself plenty of time remove the stress and get to the stadium and get those early snaps around and about outside maybe there'll be a fixture board there'll be fans milling around early as well upon arriving at the ground first thing to do obviously is find your accreditation now again during these covid times things have changed up a little bit most stadiums have a different entrance than they have previous for the media there's also red zones amber zones etc i did record a video on all that kind of stuff but it was so boring um, and hopefully we'll see the back of it shortly but basically a red zone in the football league or the premier league is where only players and match day staff are allowed and by staff we mean coaches officials and essential people who've been covid checked attested sorry covid tested and have been um, accredited to be within the red zone media or photographers especially are in the amber zone um, most football stadiums the main stand around the tunnel and and dressing room area will be red zone and the other three stands are amber zone but definitely first thing to do find out where you get your accreditation and then one piece of advice i was given very early doors when i was doing photography was first thing you should do when you arrive at any ground if it's new to you or even if you haven't been for a few years is find a steward or find someone who knows um maybe they're dealing with the media and just ask where a photographer is allowed 
it sounds a really stupid question, but you're going to do two things. First of all, you're going to make your day an awful lot easier because you'll know where you can and can't go and you can plan a little bit better for if you're covering a certain team where you may may need to be. And secondly, it's just going to make your, you know, you don't want to be one of those photographers who's really arrogant, who sits somewhere not knowing that they're not meant to be there, but then makes a bit of a fuss and someone has to come and move you. Just be professional, ask where you want to be, make a good first impression. Um, I'm all for, you know, you never know when people will come back into your life at some point in the future or may, you know, you may rely on them or have a favour to ask them. So be polite, find out where you can sit, where you can't sit, any expectations, any questions and, uh, and go from there. In terms of the first photos you're going to take once you get in the ground, always go for some general shots. So this will be a wide angle you'll need. Try and get as much of the stadium in as possible. Maybe if you can go in the stands, go a little bit further back and higher up in the stands and get some wide shots. And this is going to be the same for any sport, by the way. So if you shoot rugby or American football or ice hockey or whatever it is you shoot, getting those general views of the venue, of the stadium, of the um, you know, perhaps the circuit, if you've got an elevated view for a racing circuit, F1 or whatever. Uh, and you, it's always, you know, we talk about getting there early, getting those wide angle shots as general views of stadium. It's a great thing to do before fans get there as well, because it's just great file imagery. If you shoot for an agency, for example, those images could be used for any news stories about that club in the future, not specific to that game. Okay, last thing pre-match. As you can see here, this is at Cheltenham. Uh, not the most natural photographing position. So normally during games, I will try and sit down and be as low as possible. Uh, but this little bit of stand here and, and where I was, the Tramia players, the team I was covering were warming up right in front of it. So I decided just to hop over there. Uh, and obviously with it being all the COVID zones and stuff, I can't be pitch hard. Pitch hard is generally a red zone area nowadays. So stands are fine. So first row of the stand, stood up, shooting down. Uh, onto the teams warming up down in front of me and also the 400 mil there used a couple of times just to get the goalkeepers who are a little bit further away okay so game is kicked off uh, i'm going to interchange footage here between a couple of games so the first one this bright bright sunshine it wasn't ideal so this game was uh the Cheltenham game Cheltenham versus Tramia, and at this point in time Tramia, i think we're within a couple of points of Cheltenham both teams are going for automatic promotion from the EFL League 2 I think Cheltenham were second and Tramia were third going into this game uh, behind the goal wasn't a great option here because it was uh, it's kind of a terrace you'd have to stand up because the boards are quite high so it just wasn't really suited at the end Tramia was shooting first half so I decided to sit at the side one or two rows up so nice and as low down as possible downside was obviously the sun is blaring into me there um, but as it happened, Tramia did absolutely nothing um, during this game, really, apart from get heavily beaten. Uh, Cheltenham won this game 4 0. So, here in the first half, I'm at the side and trying to get some of those action shots side on. Now, I, there's probably another video in this altogether, but basically, when, when shooting football, I, I much prefer to be behind the goal and off to the side um, rather than shooting down the touchline, down the sideline as I am here but increasingly in the last year as stadiums become closed and players generally are not celebrating in the manner that they used to uh, shooting at the side has become much more common and what I mean by that with the celebrations is if you look when a player scores a goal with fans present they will usually run to if they're away from home to where their fans are and if they're at home and they've got fans to away to a few different sides they will generally run behind the goal and off to a side uh, generally happens and I also think that the shots of players having attempts at goal look much better from uh, kind of those wide positions behind the goal. So uh, that is my normal favoured position. However, during COVID, what's happening is players are scoring a goal and because there's no fans to celebrate with, they instantly turn around and start running back to the middle to celebrate with teammates or maybe towards their bench where the coaches and managers are. That means if you are in those usual positions behind the goals, a lot of your celebrations this last year are going to be of players' backs running away from you, uh, which isn't much good. So one of the benefits, not my favourite thing to do, but one of the benefits of shooting at the side is that you get those celebrations when the players turn around. I had absolutely nothing from the team I was shooting here because they got heavily beaten. Uh, one other thing just about shooting at the side, you can see this is uh, flipped over to Scunthorpe away. 
where it was a terrible nil-nil draw, so also no goal for to, to show you, I'm afraid. Um, but shooting from the side as well does give you better coverage of more of the players. So if you are shooting on only a 70 to 200 lens, for example, as I was for the first year or, or so doing football photography, you're not going to get much further than probably the edge of the penalty area, maybe another 5 or 10 yards beyond that in terms of photos if you're behind the goal. If you're a third of the way up the pitch, shooting from the side, then you can probably get the back four, you can get the midfield and you can get the strikers. So it will get you a better selection of shots. But it is a much, I find it a lot more difficult because it's a lot more side to side. If you're imagining, you know, if you're watching a game of tennis and you're going left, right, left, right, left, right, it's a little bit like that sometimes when you're shooting photography from the side. So not my favourite thing to do, but for both of these games, first half at least, it is what I did. The other big challenge during a game is if you need to send images live during the match or during the event. Now, several reasons you'll need to do this. If you're working for an agency, you definitely will. If you're working for a club or a certain team, then you probably will as well for things such as social media and things like that. And everyone, certainly club-wise, will use different methods. So if I'm shooting for an agency, I'll be um, cap captioning them uh, and also then sending them through FTP. Whereas if I'm working for a club, I will generally watermark them and export a high-res version as well as the, the smaller compressed watermark version. I've got a tutorial video on that process, by the way, on my channel. Uh, but then the club, I send them to the media team. Those compressed watermark versions are sent to the media team through WhatsApp. So your workflow can be quite different depending on who you're working for and how they prefer to work. Um, but another skill is try and have your laptop on the inside of you and what I mean by that is so that you're not looking away from the pitch to um, work on your laptop at least if it's to the inside so you you know the pitch is still in the corner of your eye it's a little flick of your eyes up just to see if the action has come towards you and you need to suddenly get your camera up and try and keep your camera around your neck and ready because if your laptop is off to the side and you're turning around away from the main action to to use it there's a good chance you're not going to see something happen in time especially these times of behind closed door sports when there's no crowd to give you a hint that a counter-attack coming or something like that so try and put your laptop to your inside so you can keep one eye on the football or on the sport that you're shooting uh, and yeah see how you get on with that so i hope that video has given you a little bit of insight into what goes into photographing a professional football match here in the uk or certainly from my perspective and i'm hoping some of the tips i've given you there around everything from journey to settings to where you want to position yourself and what gear to use i hope some of it is quite useful to you if you're new to this i'll try and do more of a vlog style video from an upcoming game i've got a couple of playoff games to photograph uh, and here's a, just a bit of random footage from other games while i end this video off here please subscribe let me know if you've enjoyed this video and i hope that you'll join me again soon